Hello everyone, today I'm going to be going through an overview of the RNG items that can be found in the Legends of Eidolon dungeons. I'll go through the items, what they do, what leveling them up does, and how to unlock them as well as some synergies for them. Let's jump right into this. First item is the Helping Heart. It increases your max HP by 2, and each time you level it up it increases it by another point too. It's the first of 10 items that are unlocked by default. It improves the effect of the Plump Dice and the Armadillo, since both of them scale with max HP. Rusty Blade increases base damage by 3. Each level up increases this by 0.2. It synergizes well with increased attack speed and the added line of damage, and its own effectiveness is improved by the Can of Varnish item. Mana Crystal increases max MP by 2 and each level up increases this amount by 0.2. Because higher max MP also increases your MP regen speed, getting this item will make it easier to keep your MP at full for the Stardew Drops effect. Sandals increase movement speed by 2.5%, and each level up will increase this by 0.1%. It doesn't specifically affect any other items, but movement speed can be useful for completing World 2 dungeon puzzles and moving around the maps for World 1 and 3 faster. The Pan Lid increases your block chance by 2%, also goes up by 0.1% per level up. Because the Spiky Spine does critical damage when you block, this item does improve the effect of the Spiky Spine, just because it increases the chance of blocking. The Rabbit Paw increases drop rate by 3%, and goes up by 2% per level up. While it doesn't specifically synergize with other RNG items, it helps you get more drops in World 1 to summon the boss, and in other dungeons it will help you get more gear and enhancer drops, as well as credits and flurbos. Tax Ledger increases monster cash by 8%, increasing by another 1% per level up. It's another item that doesn't interact much with other RNG items, bit of a uh, honorable mention for the golden dice, but it helps you make more money, which lets you buy more stuff, and which is usually RNG items. The big ol' belly makes food heal 20% more, and it also drops two food items immediately on pickup. The increased food effect is increased by 1.5% per level up. It's an especially useful survivability item, particularly in the World 2 dungeon, since the only other way to get food drops in there is to get a failure or a pass on a stage, where you don't get any food on a wazam. Decaf Latte gives plus 25% skilling speed, increasing by 2% per level up. While it does not directly affect fighting mobs, it can help with skilling missions in World 2 and jobs in World 3. Sharp Eye increases critical chance by 3%, increasing by another 0.5% per level up. It works well together with the Sucker Punch and Horn of the Foal items, because crit chance is king for crit builds, at least until you get to 100%. Unbalanced Scale increases sell price for all items by 20%, increasing by another 2% per level up. It is also the first item to be unlocked with an achievement, being unlocked by the 500 Copper World 1 achievement. If you already have a huge stockpile of copper, you can create a second stack in your storage chest and it counts. Sell value is situationally useful and the item probably won't make or break any of your runs, but it can get you a little bit more cash sometimes. Sugar Rush increases attack speed by 15%, going up by another 1% attack speed per level up. It is unlocked from the 1.5 kilograms achievement, and same tip for this one as for the Cowper stack one. Attack speed is pretty much the best combat stat, it works well with all damage related items, doesn't matter what, and beyond that it scales basically endlessly. Unlike the, for instance, the Handy Ice Pick, which caps out once you hit 100% on it. Speaking of which, the Handy Ice Pick gives you a 25% chance to hit twice per attack, and that chance increases by 2% per level. This is unlocked from the Copper Equipment World 1 achievement. Much like Sugar Rush, it works really well with any other damage item, but it does cap at the 100%. Some people will recommend keeping this at 33% so you get to 99% with 3 stacks, but eventually you'll probably want to increase it to at least 35% because that 1% chance does happen sometimes. Stardew Drop gives you 50% damage, but only when your MP is full. The effect is increased by 2% per level up. 
It is unlocked from the World 2 achievement Ratatat Tat for getting the FMJ bubble to level 30. Depending on which class you use in dungeons, this item can be really good or borderline useless. Mages won't get much use out of it, warriors may get some use depending on how you play, and Maestro by far gets the best effect out of this because you won't have much trouble staying at MP with only two attack skills with long cooldowns. Grey Grumblo gives plus 40% damage if you only have Grey Rarity items, increasing by 2% per level. Is unlocked from the World 1 achievement Naked and Unafraid, obtained by unequipping all of your gear and KOing a sewer poop with punches. Relying on the damage from this means that you won't be picking up any items except for Grey Rarity items. It limits your options when it comes to build variety, but it's by far the most reliable build when you haven't unlocked any of the really good higher rarity items and is a really competent starting strategy. If you specifically are avoiding unlocking a lot of items, it can be really good. Muscle Memory gives you plus 0.5% damage per skilling action, capping at 50%, and it increases by 0.02% per action per level. It is unlocked from the World 1 achievement, 20 Bundles of Jungle. Similar to the previous stacking achievements, you can make a separate stack if you need to. This item can have a decent effect, particularly in World 2 and 3. Note that additional stacks increase the bonus per skilling action but do not affect the cap, so you will never get more than a 50% damage bonus from this item. The boss skull increases boss damage by 20%, which goes up by 3% per level up. It is unlocked from the Shut It Poochie World 1 achievement for defeating Amarok. Pretty self-explanatory, it's useful for getting big damage on bosses. The Golden Dice gives plus 15% extra dice chance based on cash, and 5% more per level. It's unlocked by stacking up 2,000 iron ore. The percentage is not really accurate. The actual chance can only go up to about 13%, regardless of how many you stack up, as a combined total with the plump dice. It also does absolutely nothing in World 2 Dungeon. The plump dice gives the same bonuses as the golden dice, but based on health rather than cash. It's unlocked by stacking 250 Fragos. If you watched my trapping videos more than a week ago, I'll be disappointed if you can't unlock this one. The Recycler drops a new RNG item with a 5% chance to drop a second one. Each level up increases that chance by 0.5%. It's unlocked by getting your subclass, so you'll probably unlock it without even really trying. Dropped RNG items have two choices and can be any rarity, just like other drops. It's not really worth going out of your way to get it, but it can be a sudden bonus. And we're at the green uncommons now. Sucker Punch is the first one, giving 25% critical damage. Each level up increases this by 3%. It's one of the four default uncommons. It, of course, synergizes well with the crit rate items. The Thorny Rose increases your max health by 10 at the cost of taking 6 damage, giving one more max HP per level. It's not a good pick when you find yourself low on health, as the damage can kill you, but it can help you lower your current health for the Blood Vial, and more max HP can benefit the Plump Dice and Armadillo. Battery gives your abilities a 25% cooldown reduction, increasing by 1% per level up. It's helpful for maestros and mages who feel like their enormous cooldowns cause them problems, or warriors who want to attack even faster. Note that each stack applies that reduction to the previously reduced amount, so you can't just get zero cooldown from four of them. The Liar's Craps will give you plus 15% drop rate at the cost of 15% max HP, increasing both the benefit and penalty by 1% per level. The penalty doesn't just apply to your current HP, but it's a continuously ongoing debuff and applies to future items that you get that would increase your HP as well. The Blood Vial gives you a 2% damage bonus per 1% HP missing to a maximum of 30% damage. Each level up increases that cap by 2%. It can be a decent added damage multiplier along with other items, but generally it doesn't make, a, make or break a run. The Fashion Sense gives the item drops a 25% chance increase for equipment drops to be a higher rank on drop, 2% more per level. It's unlocked from the Careful It's Sharp achievement for stacking up 15 glass shards. The Can of Varnish gives 30% more damage to Rusty Blades, and it also gives you a free Rusty Blade. This bonus increases by 2% per level. 
It's unlocked by completing the Big Time Bloacher achievement, another stacking one. The base damage bonus starts at 0.9, and it's increased by upgrading either the Rusty Blades or the Candle Varnish. The spare change causes money to drop at your feet every 30 seconds, but only if you're standing still. Upgrading it makes it drop 5% more cash. It's unlocked by completing the Woed Together achievement. You've got to be a, in a party of two or more people, but they don't have to be in the map with you. The money this drops isn't extremely significant. The Sneaky Cap gives you 2% crit chance per minute you're undamaged, up to 30%. The bonus increases by 0.1% per level up. It's unlocked from the Well-Learned achievement. It really doesn't matter though. The item is pretty terrible, and you're probably better off without it except in very specific circumstances. Since it takes a minute per proc, it takes forever to ramp up, and if you get hit once, you lose everything that's accumulated so far. The Ninja Smoke gives plus 1.5 seconds of immunity when hit. Each level increases that by 0.1 seconds. It's completed by completing the Hammer Bub achievement. The item can help your survivability, but if you're using Spiky Spine, it reduces the speed at which it triggers, so if you're relying on that for damage, be aware of that. The Tortoise Shell increases your block chance by 0.1% each time you take a hit, to a maximum of 5%. The cap is increased by 0.2% per level. It's unlocked from the Jellyfish Jelly stacking achievement. Overall, it can give a higher bonus item for item than the pan lid, but since it starts out worse, it's usually a suboptimal pick, especially since it takes 50 hits to cap out. Vampire Fangs give you a 50% chance to heal 1 HP each time you kill a monster, increasing by 2.5% per level. It's unlocked from the Right to Bear Iron achievement, requiring almost a full iron set and one iron tool. It caps out at 100% and will never heal more than 1 HP per monster kill, but it's also the only way to heal other than picking up food. And now for the rares. The Dead Book gives plus 0.5% damage and crit chance per unique monster killed in the current dungeon run, and leveling it up increases this bonus by 0.05%. It also increases move speed for some reason. It's one of two rare items unlocked by default. Not quite as useful in Worlds 1 and 3, which only have 7 regular mobs and 3 bosses each, World 2 has 6 unique mobs and 3 bosses, as well as a lot of different World 2 mobs that will each give you another stack, so it's a little bit more useful in World 2. Armadillo gives you 1 base damage per 10 max HP, and also gives you 2 helping hearts. This bonus increases by 0.1 per level. Anything that increases your max HP will increase the bonus from this. The Psyche Spine deals 120% retaliation damage when you get hit, and crits when you block. Each level up will increase the damage it deals by 5%. It's unlocked from the Blunder Skull achievement. The damage overall is increased by any damage increase, and block crits are affected by crit chance items normally. If you get this with a Horn of the Foal, you'll only deal damage with a block. Single Cut deals 10 damage to you, and gives you plus 6% damage. It also has a 90% chance to drop again when you select it. It increases in damage by 0.2% per level. It's unlocked from the Vile Noob achievement. The damage it deals can be blocked. This is intentional. The redrop chance will not trigger if you kill yourself with the damage. The RNG voucher gives you a 10% chance to drop an RNG item whenever you sell an enhancer. This chance increases by 1% per level. It's dropped from the Souped Up Salts achievement, which takes a while to get your Redox Salt to rank 10, but it is completely worth it to get this item. More RNG vouchers will stack up together, combining their bonus. The item is really good for getting more item drops, and pretty much all of my best runs involve this item. And now for the epic items. Angelite will be used up to revive you without losing two items or getting the death debuff, and also gives you 20% drop rate if you don't use it. Each level increases the drop rate by 1%. It is unlocked from the Smirky Souls achievement, making it the highest stack size achievement to unlock an RNG item at this moment. If you have the death debuff already when you pick it up, it removes the debuff and also drops two RNG items for you. The Genesis Sphere gives you an 18.5% chance to drop another gray item when picking one up, 
increasing by 0.3% per level. It's unlocked from the Good Times Roll achievement. The Transmogrifier box can drop a lot of gray items, letting you trigger this a bunch of times when picking them up. Any items generated by this have one choice, and if you pick up a recycler from it, the drop chances proc separately. The Shattered Mirror gives you a 25% chance to recast attack abilities at no cost. The chance increases by 1% per level. It's unlocked from the Efont Trumped achievement for defeating Efont. Coin Toss and Crazy Concoctions will not trigger this recast because of the additional actions you take after casting. The Transmogrifier box takes away all of your gray RNG items that you only have one of and drops a random gray RNG item to replace each one. Leveling this does absolutely nothing. It's unlocked from the Vile Connoisseur achievement. Good uses of this item are rare, and it pretty much relies on you having Grey Genesis to be really worth it. And finally, we have the Legendary Rarity items. The Horn of the Foal increases critical chance by 15% and gives you plus 600% critical damage, but in exchange it causes non-crits to deal no damage. Leveling this up increases the critical damage by 15%. It is unlocked by completing the House Flipper achievement for killing Baba Yaga really quickly. The extremely high critical damage bonus makes it incredibly good, even if you don't have a particularly good critical build going when you get it, just getting this item to drop can really make a run. And for the last item, it's Stone of the Bulwark. It gives you 25% block chance and 300% damage but it reduces your attack speed and mana regen by 85%. It's unlocked from the I Sawed achievement, which is unfortunate because it means it can't really, really be avoided unless if you avoid leveling up construction buildings. The item is straight up terrible, uh, specifically because it reduces your base attack speed not just applying an 85% modifier to it, so Sugar Rush scales off of the reduced attack speed. You can't overcome the 85% reduction just by picking up 4 or 5 Sugar Rushes. The situations this item would actually be useful are incredibly rare. I personally don't pick it up most of the time. It's mostly a terrible item. It's a little late because this video took so long, but I wanted to thank all of my subscribers for getting me over 100. I really appreciate all of your support, and I'm looking forward to entertaining all of you for many videos in the future. As I mentioned, this video took way longer than I expected it would. Hopefully it was worth it. Planning on making even more Eidolon videos and putting up some highlights from my streams. If you like my stuff, like and subscribe, comment if you feel like it. I stream on Twitch usually two or three times a week. Uh, my currently only set time is on Tuesday nights. Um, I actually have a brand new Discord that's uh, so far pushing uh, notifications when I upload new videos and when I go live on Twitch, if you're into that. There's also some places for putting in requests and suggestions and asking questions, hanging out, talking. Just wanted to thank all of you for tuning in again and uh, have a nice day.